Hey guys, it's Kathy. I hope you're doing well. I got a sad one today. So if you're expecting giggles, don't expect it in this one. This one's just unique because normally we see the um, the criminal trials, criminal trial, criminal trial, and it's always almost all what domestic violence and um, DUIs over and over and over again. Well, this is a civil trial over a criminal matter. So this man is in prison um, for murder and the kids and everything are suing him for a wrongful death. So he's just a jerk about it. So we're going to watch this guy just be a jerk. Here we go. Excuse me, sir. This part is pretty simple. Sorry. So since this is not a criminal trial and he can't go to jail for this, he doesn't get a free lawyer. Not in a, not in a civil trial. So he's per se. An objection isn't to the content of their testimony. You can disagree with what they said, and I can hear from you. So I'm just going to use this as an example. This has nothing to do with Ms. Gum's testimony. Okay. If there was testimony that she, that the decedent um, uh, opened an accounting office uh, after taking some courses and, and, and uh, operated it for 10 years. And your recollection is that she only operated it for five years because she I, moved I on to do something gone. else. You, yeah, you can say that when you testify, but the fact that you disagree with the statement is not a reason to object, okay? Yeah, that wasn't, um, okay. Okay. Your Honor, so I just have again, I just want to put it on record again. I, I, I am not uh, I'm not qualified to stand at the bar, although I've been forced to by the court. And um I I just you, you have my you have my writ that errors have been committed prior to uh, this hearing. Uh, I believe that these elements should have been gone over thoroughly. Uh, is, the, the, the court has erred and it is forcing me to pretend that I'm an attorney and I'm not an attorney. And you're yeah, going to, what, what are you going to do? Teach me how to, uh, I, I, I didn't even want to say what I just said. I don't want to have to contradict what she's saying. I, and and um, if, if someone wants to make uh, statements that aren't true, as long as they don't, I don't. I don't know what any of what the the uh, council is uh, directing her into has to do with anything. But I, I, I just don't know. I mean, this to me judicially is. Uh, it's I kind of now. Okay, hold on, Mister Ma'am. Ma um, just just uh, bear with me for a moment, uh, Mister Mister Chung. Um, uh, I'm going to. Depart a little bit from my ruling on your objection, uh, which I, I overruled the objection and explained why. Yes. Um, I'm not yes. going to get into the fact that you're not represented by counsel. It appears that that's been addressed previously in the matter. Well, but the court. Really. The, hold on, hold on. The court deals with unrepresented parties all the time in all kinds of settings, whether it be civil, criminal, family, and uh, every um, uh, every every safeguard will be made that I can within the rules of judicial uh, conduct and within the rules of practice to account for the fact that you're unrepresented. We obviously can't give you legal advice, but you'll be given all due process rights that are afforded you. But the last thing I want to mention is in a wrongful death case, and I could cite the law directly if necessary, but I'm going to do the best I can. Okay. A party proving damages in a wrongful death case is welcome to present evidence regarding the circumstances of the person's life, the things that they enjoyed and did, uh, the, the things that they, um, uh, the interactions and relationships they had, the hobbies they had, the jobs they had, uh, and because uh, the allegations are life, loss of life's enjoyment and so forth, and there's also claims of lost earnings. 
So the court needs to have information regarding what the person did, their earning capacity, their educational level. All those are fair game. So it's a rather broad area that counsel can inquire into. So I just wanted you to know that before we embark on a, more of a history of the decedent's life. Uh, Mr. Semerero, please proceed. Could I, could I ask you one thing, Your Honor? Well, if that's the case, uh, why would there be any speculation as to what somebody did uh, not to make any more or any less of that, but it's just to prove uh, on paper what the uh, monetary income of the uh, deceased person would be, uh, therefore simplifying and getting to the uh, crux of the matter? Court will uh, give deference to the manner in which any party presents their case. I'm not going to second guess how they do it as long as it complies with the rules of evidence. And okay. uh, I would give the same consideration to you, Mr. Simarara. Thank you, Your Honor. Am um, I able to elaborate now? Please, yes. Yeah, so my mother was a bartender over her whole adult lifetime. My parents actually met while she was bartending at the Stone House Cafe. She also worked at Dots Cafe. She worked at the Killingly VFW until shortly before she met. Mr. Chung, she's only not, she only knew Mr. Chung for approximately the last two years of her life. So out of 44 years, he did not know her or her careers or what she was doing at the time. Thank you, Abby. Um, so let's return to, um, I believe you mentioned that um, you, you had a small child when your mother passed that yeah. she only briefly knew. Yeah. So I was 17 years old when my mother was murdered. Um, my son Stanley was five and a half weeks old at the time. She had been married for two and a half weeks to Mr. Chung. She had seen my son born and my brother's oldest child born. Since then, she has had eight more grandchildren born that she never got to see or meet. Ten grandchildren. Ten grandchildren altogether. And she only got to meet two of them for very briefly. And how was that for her? How did she experience meeting her grandchildren? She loved, she loved both of her grandchildren. She doted over my brother's son, Autumn, because she had red hair and looked just like my, looked just like my mother. So I have to object to this uh, incorrect statement been made. This has never been proved that it was a murder by the state of Connecticut. Well, I just put that in there, but jerk so that must have been an otherwise exciting time in your life having just had a child um and what what was your experience with her in those last few days yeah so over the five weeks that my mother was around for me raising my first child she um she was there almost every day if she if i didn't see her every day i would talk to her every day but a lot of times she would pick me up. My um, my son's father was actually working with Mr. Chung at the time. So I would spend a lot of time over the house with my mother while those two were working. And was that something that was uh, indicative of, of her general uh, attitude, being close with family? Yes, family was very important to my mother. She always kept us kids close together. We spent a lot of time with our extended family. And she had also had some of her family fractured when she was a child. So I did believe it was very important for her to keep family together. My mother had two siblings that were given up for adoption and one was older than her, one was younger. Since then, the rest of our family has gotten to meet those siblings, found them through ancestry and gotten to know their families as well, more cousins and children that my mother never got to meet. She never got to meet her brother, who has very similar mannerisms and attitudes as her. They listen to the same kind of music, and they probably would have gotten along very well. And otherwise, getting to know family, this was something that she spent a lot of time doing, spent a lot of energy on? Yes, she did. Absolutely, yes. She, um, she also missed out on... Um, two of her sister's weddings. She was the maid of honor in her first sister's wedding and then was not around for either of her other sister's weddings to participate in those or see them get married. And one of them had kids since then too. So in the time since, um, 
if it was important to her to to be present for those kinds of things to mend family are there other events that come to mind that uh, it would have been important to her to be present for as well absolutely yes so i i can't say that my mother wasn't there to comfort me for her own death but since my mother died when I was 17, my father then passed away when I was 20 years old. And my mother wasn't there to comfort me for my father's death or my siblings. And she hasn't, neither of my parents have been around for most of my adult life. She's missed out on all of, pretty much all of my adult events, jobs, cars. I have a nice big Chevy truck now. She would really love, she drove a Chevy truck. So she would be really impressed with that. <laughs> sure she would have. And you mentioned grandchildren. Um, what are events in their life that she has missed out on? Yes. Yeah. So I also want to point out that she missed my brother making the president's list at college and um, my brother's music career and having his own YouTube channel. She a, was a big fan of music, live music, was into a lot of heavy metal bands. My oldest son also plays the guitar now. She didn't. She never got to see him play because she only knew him for the first five weeks of his life. She's missed out on my kids being in Boy Scouts and going to church. Like she put us in Girl Scouts when we were kids. She's missed out on every single birthday, making a special birthday dinner like she did for us every year. She's missed out on every single Christmas, um, cooking big meals like she did for us up until the time of her death. Her special recipes like her spinach casserole, her crab dip. And grandma's jello mold that she would always make. She's missed out on Easter and the giant Easter egg hunts that we have every year with all of our cousins, all of our children getting together, all of her grandchildren getting together for Easter and getting Easter baskets and Easter eggs hunts. We always did those every year. That was an important thing for her, too. Yeah, Is there anything else that comes to mind? You think of the things that you used to love and things that you think she would have wanted to see or appreciated um, when you think of the time that's passed since. Um, yeah, like I said, she was really into heavy metal. She loved Pantera. She loved Metallica. Tool was one of her favorite bands. She didn't get to go see Tool with me and my sister when we recently went, which was her favorite band. She would have loved to go. She loved concerts. She didn't get to go on many vacations like we had done all through my childhood. We went on multiple small vacations around the United States. She loved Cape Cod. She liked to go to Lake George. Um, she wanted to go to the Mütter Museum in Pennsylvania because she was very interested in anatomy. That's another reason why she worked in the medical field. Um, and all these vacations that we've gone on, she hasn't been able to go with us. The only thing I can do is bring her ashes and spread her in these places that we go. She also used to raise monarch butterflies with us. We would go and pick monarch eggs off of milkweed and raise them caterpillars into chrysalis, into butterfly at, at home with her. And she never got to do that with her grandkids. She has never seen me do that with her grandkids because she hasn't been around. So these traditions get carried on. She Absolutely. Yeah. See. Thank you very much for sharing that with us. Is there anything else that you'd like to add? Anything that comes to mind when you think of your mother and the things that you would have liked to see? Um, uh, yeah, I think that. My mom would have liked to see all of her kids as adults and how far they've come and everything they've accomplished growing up without parents. Thank you. All right, thank you, um, Ms. Uh, Gums. Um, so Mr. Chung, uh, I'm going to, uh, it's incumbent upon me to allow uh, cross-examination of any witness. Uh, I do want to say though, that the court has already ruled on the objection regarding sort of the fundamental finding previously uh, of uh, a liability uh, and to the state's conviction previously. So I am not going to allow uh, questions that go to that issue. If you have questions that are within 
the scope of the direct examination that may concern factual issues regarding um, the decedent's life, uh, I, I must allow those questions. Uh, but uh, if it goes beyond the scope. You don't have to worry about it. I'm glad, but coward. OK. okay. All right, very well. Uh, so you're, you have no questions, you said, sir? No, I do not. OK, thank you. Uh, Mr. Samarara. Right, I uh, have no further questions for this witness. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. You have a, another witness? I do, yes. Um, plaintiff next calls Mona Pepin to the stand. Good afternoon. All right. Ms. Pepin, uh, Mr. You... Samararo, can you see Ms. Pepin? Um, I don't know if you can close the blinds there so we can get it, see your face. Yeah. Let me go do that. Excuse me, Your Honor. You don't have to do that, Ms. Pepin. I'll take care of that. There My apologies, Your Honor. All right, thank you. We have to be as if we're in court, so we do the best we can. Um, Madam Clerk, would you swear in the witness, please? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Do you solemnly swear or solemnly and sincerely affirm, as the case may be, that all the information you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth of the whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God or upon penalty of perjury of the law? I do. Could you please state your full name for the record? Mona Pepin. M-O-N-A-P-E-P-I-N. -E Thank you. Mr. Semeraro, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Ms. Pepin. Good afternoon. Do you like prefer to be called Mona or Ms. Pepin? Mona is fine. Okay. Um, so uh, can you tell us what your relationship um, to Paige was? We were friends. We were friends for many, many years. Since her son was about four or five, she was a, a beautiful soul who loved people, plants, animals, just children. She, she really cared. She cared about life. She cared about everything as a whole. Her children and the children she cared for came first. Her customers always came first, whether it be cleaning the houses or cleaning the offices or bartending or just out in public. She was a very compassionate person and she strived very hard to make all ends meet for her family in all aspects of their lives. Thank you for that. Can you tell me how the two of you met? At bar. <laughs> <laughs> Where we worked. We worked as bartenders at the Stone House in Versailles. Um, I had met her originally when she worked at Dot's Cafe in Montville. Um, where we had several friends that we all rode motorcycles, we all had good times, we, you know, dinners, lunches, picnics, whatever. Is it fair to say that you were pretty familiar with both her professional and her personal life? Oh, absolutely. We, we cleaned together. I worked with her cleaning houses and businesses. She's got a lot of dietary at Bacchus. And then she went into her CNA and PCT where she came to the convalescent home where I worked to get her immediate orientation. And then went back to Bacchus and worked in several other homes along with bartending and cleaning for years before she met Mr. Chung. Can you tell me what it was like to work alongside her? What was we she like as a worker? a good time. Um, some days it was a little more frustrating than others. But basically, we got the job done. It, it, that was the need and the necessity. We've heard testimony that she had a number of different jobs. I mean, wh what was she like uh, in terms of her work? Very professional. Um, if we were going in to clean a home, we made sure that it was clean from top to bottom. Toilets, counters, sinks, living rooms, floors were mopped, basements were cleaned. Um, in the healthcare industry, people are a priority and too many people don't give caregivers enough 
credit for what they do because it is a very brutal job. But she always gave it her best shot and she always tried to help people. Why was that? Because she cared. She's human, just like the rest of us, except most people don't care. She cared. So would you say that she took pride in her work? Absolutely. So she must have been proud of the experience of advancing in that career. Oh, she was still studying to advance on after her PCT. She was working on her math and a few other things so she could further her education from the PCT, possibly to LPN or RN, to again assist humanity. Thank you very much for that. So what about outside of work? What about her hobbies? Can you tell us a little about what she liked to do? Crafting, gardening, um, riding on motorcycles, socializing with friends and people. She liked meeting people. She liked knowing about people, about if she could help them, she would try to help them. It, she loved animals. She, she would pick up a turtle off the road and release it to a safe area. She would take home a bunny, a baby bunny that was left to die and nurture it at home with her children and teach them the proper aspects of caring for wildlife and critters through their entire life. And is that um, practice something that has continued on in her Oh, absence? absolutely. Her children care for pets and animals all the time. They care for me. And if she were here, Paige would have been here for me through so much, through the loss of their father, through the loss of my husband, through my trials and tribulations, which are not important here, but there have been a few. And she would have stood by me and she would have cared for me. Instead, she is gone. Mm -hmm. And now we, as her children and myself, care for each other. And these were the kinds of things that it's important for her to be there for? Yes. We've heard that family was very important to her, and it sounds like the most important thing to Paige was her family, and she would be very proud of her children right now for the way they're growing up without her, for everything they strive to do every day with her in their thoughts. Excuse me. Is there anything else that, that comes to mind? There is so much I could say, but it's at this point, she's gone. She was taken severely two and a half weeks after her marriage, brutally. And if I may say point blank to the head is brutally. That's a lie. This, this is your opportunity to express any final thoughts that uh, you feel Paige would have wanted to see, would have cared about things she loved in life, things that she missed out on in life. She missed out on watching her 10 grandchildren be birthed and grown into the beautiful children they are. She didn't get to see her children grow up. She, she doesn't get to see them miss her every day. She doesn't get to see them try to practice the family things that she taught them. She doesn't get to see them play with the chickens that she so loved. She doesn't get to see them raise their dogs or their children. It's so much she's missed that cannot be replaced and cannot be replaced in her children's hearts either. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you, uh, counsel. He's such a good lawyer for this. Very soft-spoken, like a funeral director or, or a therapist. But I want to see, I want to know how he would be if like he was in a heated argument with a, another attorney, you know, if he would be that soft-spoken or if he could be like passionate. There's no other attorney here though, so. Um, I'm going to um, use my um, discretion to ask a, a couple of follow-up questions before cross-examination is offered. Um, Ms. Pepin, um, you testified regarding the... Um, decedent um, uh, studying for or obtaining nursing certifications. Could, could you uh, describe that a little bit further? 
After her PCT, she had started working on math and studying a little more science. She was hoping to further her education, possibly to LPN or RN, as you are well aware of what the healthcare system is like right now. We don't have to go into that. It's It sucks. Excuse my English. Okay. okay. So she, she obtained a certification to be a personal care assistant first? PCT, patient care tech, yes. Okay. That would allow and you. Go ahead. That would allow you to do extra care on people. Like being a healthcare worker for over 27 years, when we started, we were allowed to change colostomy bags, um, stuff like that. And as time proceeded, a lot of the girls don't do that now, but patient care techs were taught to do colostomy bags, to DC Foley's, to DC IVs, to check all that, your blood pressures, your, all that. That's what a patient care tech does. It takes the place of the nurse having to do a lot of that work so the nurse can concentrate on their meds and possibly wound care. And is this, was this, uh, did you say that this was in a hospital setting or yes. a long-term care hospital, Either Bacchus? Bacchus Hospital and also long-term care facilities. Okay. And did um, Ms., uh, did, did uh, your friend work in, um, in, with you at these places? She worked with me in her training at a convalescent home because that's where I work. And then she went right back to Bacchus and other homes in the process because she was guaranteed the position at Bacchus if she took the course. Okay. And um, how long was she, well, when did she obtain this certification with respect to um, when, she, uh, when she died? How long before she died? Maybe four or five years before she died. I would say two, somewhere between 2000 and 2004. Okay. All right. All right. And at the time of her death, um, was that the level she had obtain, att attained in terms yes. of uh, certification? Yes. She was okay. certified patient care technician. Very good. Um, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, you. And uh, Mr. Chung, at this point, uh, as I did before, I would offer you a uh, cross-examination regarding the facts elicited uh, on direct examination uh, concerning the, you know, the purposes of the hearing, not, not the uh, underlying uh, conviction or anything to that effect. You repeat that, please. Any questions? What's that, yes. sir? I do. Um, Pep, and I know that, um, and I'm sorry that I don't have counsel to buffer me between you and I. I understand that. Uh, I, I just as a human being, I, I understand you hate my guts, and um, your, your hostility is uh, completely understandable. But. Um, this is a, a, a court action, and I'm just going to be very brief with you. Um, and I'm sorry that I even have to address you personally. Like I said, I know that uh, I, I, I don't want you to think this is easy for me, and I, I'm not looking for any um, sympathy from you because I know there's uh, absolutely impossible. And I, I know that you were a friend of Paige's. Um, Clear and simple to the point, uh, you uh, offered yourself in statement during your uh, you know, attorney Samaro's questioning as almost that you were a witness to facts. Um, uh, you've made this statement before in previous um, uh, open court. Uh, are you aware, uh, Ms. Pepin, that? Um, no evidence has ever been brought forward to your statement that there was a point blank. Uh, the fact of the matter, uh, I'm not going to get into, but 
that your statement that, that there is no evidence to that statement. Objection, um, Your Honor. This really isn't relevant yeah. to hearing damages. Yeah, that's sustained as as okay. the court previously explained. Well, that I don't believe, Your Honor. I, I, I'm not an attorney, but it, it should not. Inaccurate statements should not be allowed to make, especially for something that is still uh, questionable in the uh, judicial uh, world. Okay. The 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 court made the. Uh, uh ruling earlier um and explaining the parameters of this proceeding that okay. it's a hearing and damages in a well, civil case it's all right let, let me finish sir it's okay uh it's a hearing and damages in a civil case in which liability has been determined by summary judgment well, so then that's where that's where then then that's where any witnesses that the, um uh, I don't know what uh, coaching or something that he has already uh, put these people through, but uh, I certainly uh, think that uh, they should have been directed not to make statements as to uh, the ones that have been made. Uh, if that is going to sway the court, as I think that I can safely state that the court is not familiar with the uh, true facts of the uh, criminal matters of the case. Well, a uh, court would note that um, this is a court trial and the court is expected to um, only weigh that evidence, which is relevant, material, admissible, and probative uh, to the case at bar and to the issues only in this case. If it were a jury case, we might get more into what we have to strike and what we have to instruct the jury about not to consider. But the court will not be swayed by any statements that aren't uh, within the four corners of the complaint in this case. All right, uh, have, any further uh, questions? I have in Mr. front of me a um, police report that was made, I believe this have been, did you were formally known as uh, your last name, C-O-U-R-T-E-M-A-N-C-H-E? Just uh, uh, objection, Your Honor. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of form, I haven't been presented with this document that he has in front of him. Yes, you were. Yes, you were. You, uh, it, it was a writ of quorum nobis, there were, and, and you were provided the document. Uh, just as a proffer, sir, what's the, uh, what's the document you're trying to, uh, uh, I don't think you're trying to offer it, but you're reading from or looking at referencing it. It was, a, it was a police report. Mm -hmm. Police Department it, of Norwich. Um, are you, are you, you no, no, go ahead. And it, did you say, sir, it was attached wanted, to I, your, I, I, My first question was the, that this, if this was the same person that filed this report that I'm looking at on the court. All right. So, just a couple of things here. You could ask the witness, and then we'd have to see whether the line of questioning is probative and relevant, but you can certainly ask the question if she was, the witness, if she was known by a different name. Okay, you that's what I did. Have anything you want at your, at your, at your uh, table there to refresh your own recollection. But um, unless you're going to offer the report or some or use it to refresh her recollection or something, um, it's it's you know it's not it's a document not in evidence. So it, it has questions. been submitted. It has been submitted to the court, Your Honor. Um, but it, it initially, can we just clarify if that if if this is the same person? Or Maybe I can you answer that? the question. No, I, you can answer the question. Did you, were you known by a different name that the yeah, I was not married to Kate Jai. My, my maiden name is Kudamash. My married name is Pepin. Okay. okay. Um, thank you. Um, this uh, police report regarding property, um, it's not relevant to, um, I just wanted to, since I have this opportunity, I just wanted to make sure this was the same person. Uh, this can be addressed at a later uh, time. 
Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. I see. Okay. Well, I wasn't sure where you were headed there. Thank you. Any follow up, Mr. Samarara? Retroactive, I guess, objection for relevance, but I'm not sure how that works. Right. I work. believe it's prudent to not uh, go into this at this time, and it's something I can take. But uh, before the record, you were supplied this police report, Attorney Samarara. Yeah, the court won't be considering any evidence that's not. Uh, relevant to the, as I said, the four I understand. That's why I said I thought it was prudent not to question it, but I just wanted to verify Thank that you. since I had the opportunity. I hope that's okay. Okay. Uh, I guess you're, unless uh, uh, Mr. Semeraro has any, um, I guess he, that was a pretty limited cross, so I don't. I don't even know why he wants that information, but it sounds like she has to deal with him more in the future. Sounds like he has something up his sleeve. I think there'd be any questions on that. So I think um, Ms. Pepin, you're all set. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Samararo, any further witnesses today? I do have uh, one more witness, Your Honor. Um, if I could just have um, maybe two minutes, uh, that'd be all right. Yeah, the court will be in a brief recess. You can turn off your camera, microphone, sound if you wish. Uh, and uh, court will be in recess. So, uh, I'd ask Mr. Uh, 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 Mr. Chung not to speak during that period. Thank you. Court's in brief recess. I have no way of turning this off. I cannot. That's okay. That's okay. Oh, what can you, start? you need something? We're just in a brief recess. This is the court clerk. Uh, we're just in a brief two minute recess, and then we're going to get back on the record. Okay. Do you want me to leave his Thank camera you, mic on? Is that okay? Or you could turn it off. Yes. Okay, I'll leave it. Okay. Okay. You can stay, man. Thank you. And is this witness? Thank you, Your Honor. It's coming. There we go. Okay, um, we are back. Uh, we I don't think we ever went off the record. We're back in session. Uh, Attorney Semeraro, you had another witness to offer? Yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, plaintiff calls Leah Gums. All right, um, Madam Clerk, if you'd swear in the witness. And is this witness also uh, uh, asking uh, not to disclose address under protective order? That's correct, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Ms. Dobbins. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Gums, if you can please raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or solemnly and sincerely affirm, as the case may be, that all the information you shall give concerning this case shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God or upon penalty or perjury of the law? Yes. Could you please state your full name, spelling your last name for the record? Leah Gums, G U M B S. Thank you. Counsel, please proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. <clears throat> Good afternoon, Ms. Gums. Would you like me to refer to you as Leah or Ms. Gums? Leah is fine. Okay. So, Leah, you've heard uh, what we've been here talking about uh, today. Uh, can you please? Uh, tell me your relationship uh, with Paige. I am my mother's second child. Um, and then we also have our older brother and my younger sister, Abby. Just to clarify, when you say my mother's, that's Paige. Paige, yep. Thank you. So can you tell me a little bit about your relationship with Paige before she passed? I had a very close relationship with my mom. Um, we, as my sister stated, grew up in the home with her. She was a daycare provider, so we essentially had a stay-at-home mom for the majority of our young childhood. And then even when she went back to work, as I, as a teenager, worked with her at the clean home jobs, and we spent a lot of time together outside of work. Um, uh, even, you know, I talked to her every single day, even receiving a phone call and voicemails from her the night before she passed away because we spoke very frequently. 
I see. What was it like having that kind of a relationship with your mother? What was your relationship like? I loved having her as a mom. <laughs> I loved having her as a mom. She was friendly and caring and she was always had open arms for me and all of my group of friends and my siblings. She was always there for us and she enjoyed being there for us. She enjoyed coming to our school events and our sporting events and trips and just spending time with her family. When you think about that, those things that, that you have memories of her enjoying, appreciating, does that bring to mind things since that she would have enjoyed as well? There's so many things she would have enjoyed that she's missed out on. Um, she would have enjoyed being able to go on the two and a half week trip that me and my boyfriend at the time and my children went on to California where I was engaged in front of her sister and she would have loved to have been there to witness that and she would have loved to have been able to come to San Diego with us to spend the time with her sister and for her to meet her nephews that she never got to meet and she would have loved to have been able to come on our weekly trips or our yearly trips to Lake George where me and my siblings take our children to Lake George and she would have loved to have been able to go on boats with us and camping with us and she would have loved to have been able to watch me raise my chickens and my ducks and my turkeys because that's something she really enjoyed when we were children. She has missed out on an incredible amount of things. She's missed out on watching my daughter graduate from eighth grade this year, going to high school. She's missed out on my brother graduating from college. She has missed out on my daughter winning a national cheer competition in Florida. And I know that she would have been by my side on that trip, watching my daughter compete at nationals against hundreds of other teams in the country. And she did not get to do that because her life was cut short. You mentioned your, your brother graduating from college, um, but you also said that I, I believe earlier that he was, um, how old was your brother when she passed? My brother was 24. He graduated from college after that? Yep. My brother really struggled in high school and my mother supported him and pushed him to graduate from high school. So my mother would have been honored and so proud of him to see how well he did in college and so proud that she got to push him through high school so he could achieve that goal and him being on the president's list for his graduation. But she didn't get to see that. She didn't get to see any of thing past our teen years. She's proud of you, my wife. She's very proud of me, and she's very proud of my siblings. Is there anything else before we conclude? You said a lot of powerful things. Um, is there anything else when you think of the most important things to her uh, in her life? I mean things that you want to make known before the court? I do. Um, I know this is a little controversial, but my mother loved smoking weed and my mother has missed out on being able to see marijuana legalized across the country. She does not get the opportunity to, to smoke publicly and go into a dispensary and legally purchase marijuana. And I think that is a huge thing that she missed out on that she would have loved deeply okay anything else um she is incredibly missed and i know that if she did not pass away she would be here holding our hand. She would be with us on every single vacation. She would be at every graduation. She would be at every birthday. She would be at every holiday. 
She would be making Christmas ornaments with my children before Christmas to give us Christmas gifts to family members. She would be making our extravagant Christmas stockings and she would be doing the same for our children. Like my, my daughter, I found out I was pregnant with two weeks after my mother died and she has my mom's birthday. And I can't tell you how incredibly excited that my girl has the same birthday as her. And she missed that. She didn't get to experience that. She didn't get to hold my hand while I gave birth to my daughter. She didn't get to be there to support me in healing from C-sections. She didn't get to do any of that because her life was taken too short. And whether it was intentional or unintentional, Mr. Chung shot my mom. That has never been up for question. He has always admitted that he did it. It's just in a matter of how he did it. And at the end of the day, he killed my mother and he took her life away from me, from my siblings, from my mother's friends, from my aunts, from my children. And we go without our mother and our grandmother and our sister and our friend and our family member because of Mr. Chung's actions. Thank you. Sorry. No more questions. All right. Uh, quick question from the court, ma'am. Thank you for your testimony. Um, during the early part of your testimony today, you um, talked about how your mother had the um, at-home daycare. Do you need a moment? No, I'm, moment? I'm all right. Okay. I'm all right. You may, if you do. Okay. Uh, she had the at, stay at the at-home daycare, and she was kind of like a stay-at-home mom for for quite some time. And then you said she started doing other work. I'm just trying to put my timetable together, and it it got garbled a little bit. What what did she start to do first? You were talking about work outside the home. She had her cleaning business and then okay. she started her, her schooling to go into healthcare. I'm pretty sure she started out as a CNA. Right All right, she started out in the kitchen at Baptist Hospital and mm -hmm. um in dietary and then from there she went to work as a CNA and then a PCT. She worked at Bacchus Hospital for over 10 years and she worked her way up in the ranks and it was very important to her to continue learning and continuing her career with Bacchus Hospital. And that was something she really enjoyed. She enjoyed learning and that was also taken away from her. Being able to achieve those next steps and being able to learn all these new things were very important to her. And she didn't have the opportunity to continue her education, which she would have loved. I would have loved to have been able, seeing my mom go to college to become an RN and be able to be there and support her in a graduation as an RN. But my mom never got to do that because her life was cut short. Thank you. And how, how far had she gotten along with those um, plans to pursue an RN? Had she... Um, and I, had she applied yet or was it still in the no, stages so she, of she was done with pct and she was studying for her lpn i believe mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. the next one like and and you have to like you have to understand i was 19 years old this was a long time ago so like i can only recall so much like i was a child i didn't think i had to remember these things but it's the only right. things i have to remember so when when she died, um, your brother was twenty four, and yeah, you were nineteen. I was I was nineteen, and my brother is four and a half years older than me. Okay, and you have how many children do you have, ma'am? I have three children. Okay, and so, how old are they? Um, my stepdaughter is twenty two. My daughter is fourteen, and my son is eight. Okay. And my so, brother, my brother is here today. So she found out she was pregnant with her daughter two weeks after her mom died. Her daughter's fourteen, so this was like fifteen years ago. Because he wouldn't be able to control his emotions, because this still hurts very, very much for all of us. 
my brother's children are 16, 13, um, 11, 9, 16, 13, 11, 9, and 6, or 7, and 4. Okay. And my right. sister's children are 15 and 12. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, before I, uh, well, um, Mr. Chung, do you have any cross-examination questions within the scope of the direct examination or the court's questions? No. Okay. Mr. Semerar, do you have any questions based upon the court's questions? No, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Ms. Gumps. The court appreciates your testimony today. Uh, Mr. Semeraro, any further um, witnesses or other evidentiary offers? Um, I have no further witnesses, Your Honor. Um, in light of your um, request to forego uh, formal opening and closing statements, um, I will dispense with most of it, but I do have um, just a very brief statement uh, that I would like to present before the mm -hmm. court. Um, okay, I think I waived the opening. I didn't waive closing, oh. but before you do a closing, uh, probably appropriate for me to see if Mr. Chung has any testimony or, or evidence he wanted to offer in defense on the hearing and damages issue. Mr. Chung, did you have anything you wanted to say? Or uh, I will certainly welcome any kind of argument if counsel's putting a figure on this or anything, but if you had any testimony you wanted to offer, this is the time for that. The argument would be after Mr. Samararo. I, um, I don't quite understand why the court allowed these witnesses to be hostile and uh, accusatory to me. Um, I'm in my 16th year of incarceration. I'm not asking for anybody to feel sorry for me. Uh, but, um, you know, I had a professional career. I was a builder. I'm a, a, a licensed journeyman with the uh, Carpenters Union, which is not an easy thing to be. I have a certificate of building performance science. I have a documented building history uh, going back to um, the time that I was in college. I have a college degree, associates in fine arts, and I'm pretty just short of a bachelor's degree uh, in marketing, which I started learning to build while I was uh, going to college. That here is here and over there at this point. I, what I'm trying to say is that, uh, Your Honor, my life had some significance too. And um, it's good. it is yeah. unfortunate. Yeah. It is unfortunate that two counsels entrusted to bring the facts of the matter of this case into court have failed severely. And perhaps if trusted counsel had done this, there would not be uh, such hostilities and hatred to me that a uh, firearm that was not, as far as I knew, loaded, was handled by somebody. That's a fact. There was un unknown DNA found on the, on the firearm. And this was never pursued by any defense counsel, and it was never pursued by the state's attorney's office. And it was easier for them to manufacture something which is so far fetched and so unsupported by any physical evidence or speculation. Yes, it has been brought up in the, within the last hour, the brief amount of time that Paige and I were married. Um, I'm going to say two things that could go on and on, but you know, why would I have killed her? And uh, why would I have caused someone's death intentionally? There's no reason for that. And, and, and on top of that, how do you think that I feel- Mr. Chung, 
Mr. Chung, please suspend for a moment. Mr. Semeraro, you were trying to speak. Yeah, well, I was objecting uh, for the record to the um, relevance uh, of this um, to a, a hearing and damages, but I'm going to go further also and say this is inflammatory uh, mm -hmm. to the witnesses that are present um, when mm -hmm. there's no evidence to any of this. And in fact, Mr. Chung took an Alford plea because of the overwhelming strength of evidence against him. So on, on several grounds. That wasn't why I took the Alford plea. plea. So you're inaccurate okay. and you're wrong. OK, Hang so on don't on use right. this. Don't use this format to falsely accuse me and say something that's not true. I had I, right. I did not have my no, I'm sorry. Okay. He just made a statement that's completely, completely false, Your Honor. All right, but I, I've been asked to rule on something. So, Mr. Chung, Mr. Semeraro, I want you to know that the court almost on its own um entered a ruling during Mr. Chung's presentation as he started to get into the uh, underlying criminal action. Uh, and the conduct of his attorneys and all that kind of thing, because the court doesn't believe it's relevant. I was giving him a little bit of latitude. I was kind of letting this slip into a closing argument uh, because I, I thought it was going to be fairly brief. So I was trying not to um, interfere with the flow of the proceedings, but I must sustain, um, now that it's been made, Mr. Semerar's objection, um, the um, conviction, uh, and even the liability in this matter, since summary judgment was granted, are not at issue. The only things that are at issue today are um, what level of damages would be appropriate to award the plaintiff in this case um, for wrongful death. And so uh, while I gave a little bit of latitude because it's an emotional issue and it's important to everybody, I, I can't let it go further. So the objection okay, is Your Honor, can I just say that why was it allowed to go that way at all? Why why were these witnesses allowed to uh, uh, say what they said? Again, again, for the same reason that I, I gave you a little bit of latitude, I gave them some latitude. It was about 30 seconds of explaining okay, in the context that, of how, how, how it's affected their lives. So thank here, you. That's here, the court's explanation. I, we, we, okay. So the only thing I've got to say is um, I've been incarcerated for 16 years. I've had no income. Uh, I have another 10 years to go because of a uh, failure of my defense counsel, regardless of what uh, Attorney San Marrero wants to uh, speculate or fantasize about. The fact of the matter was, um, is what monetary uh, recovery, if, if, if I think that's where this is going, correct? I mean, you're not just out here to try to uh, uh, cause an effect or uh, the death of Paige or, um, you know, it's a, if I, I, I'm, I'm, you're, we're here talking about damages. What do you hope to recover from a person who is a ward of the state. Right. Well, that we get to that one uh, when we okay, get to Okay, I just thought I'd bring that up because I find that this whole thing is, you know, I, I just right. don't know but where you can possibly you, be going. You, you can't stop a civil action in its tracks because you're not sure what the recovery would be. No, I'm not so trying to get, stop it. Cross that bridge when we get there. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Semeraro, any closing statement? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, we've heard a lot of um, very personal testimony today. Um, and in light of that, I'm, I'm going to forego um, any platitudes or flowery words or uh, commenting again on, on most of it. Um, Your Honor has um the plaintiff's memorandum of claim to damages which was previously submitted um suggesting uh recovery um that the uh the plaintiffs believe is fair the only point um that i wish to bring to the court's attention um is that we have been focused on page's life today um and so just very briefly I'd like to talk about the moment of her death. 
um, because we don't know exactly what happened in the last moments of Page's life. Um, but all we have to rely on is the defendant's own testimony. Uh, in the documents um, I uh, directed the, the court's attention to earlier in the record, um, the defendant has testified that their eyes met after the firearm discharged. There was a look of surprise on her face. Her last moments of life were spent staring into the eyes of the man who killed her. Yeah, that, I, I can't allow this. That's I'm not sure true. You can. Okay. I'll, I'll, wait, I'll hear an objection. Oh, it's okay, Mr. Simmerar. I'll hear. An, I don't like to interrupt a closing argument, but I'll hear an objection. I Go need ahead, to know. Sir. Is he reading off of something? Uh, and I just wanted to, um, before we get to that issue, the court wants to explain uh, a little something further about a hearing and damages. <laughs> While we were not litigating the cause of death. The pain and suffering associated with death, emotional and physical, are fair game for the hearing and damages. So I wanted to make that clear. Um, so while liability was previously determined in the summary judgment for the purposes of this case, the um, information regarding um, that uh, uh, the the moment of death and the in the moments before the um the woman passed away are relevant but mr semeraro i think the question is is appropriate um from the court uh, i want to ensure that what you are reading from or summarizing is something that is before the court either by judicial notice that i took earlier or um other other facts that are actually in evidence absolutely your honor um okay. so if you just give me one moment and that's a long way of of, uh, of actually uh, addressing um, the objection Okay, so um, the first document that I directed the court's attention to earlier, um, which was the Supreme Court uh, summary of the criminal action, um, which was included in a uh, document on the docket 117. Um, on page two of the memorandum in support, uh, memorandum supporting plaintiff's motion for summary judgment, excuse me, uh, in the Supreme Court's um, description. The second paragraph, it is the second to last sentence in the paragraph. After the gun fired, the defendant looked up and saw the victim who looked scared. No, I, I, you have to show me that. I never said that. I never said that. Never said that. You have to show me that document, sir. Well, the document is in the record. Well, I, I'm sorry. I can't recognize it now because I'll tell you one thing. I never said that. Uh, furthermore, um, I will. the second document that I directed the court's attention to, which is uh, Exhibit B, of that same document, um, page 53. You'll just allow me a moment to turn to it. Oh, I'm sorry, I believe I said it was Exhibit C, excuse me. 53. Yes, I'm gonna, it is. I'm going to pick, Rihanna, can I speak the, the context uh, well, of which someone, if, if, if we're going into this, the, this, the, the incident, I don't understand 
because a, 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 somebody dying has already been established. Well, I'm addressing but, the objection. No, oh, hold on. I wasn't done talking. The the context, if a, if a gun went off in the room that you're in right now, you might have a look of surprise about you, especially if you weren't aware that it was going to go off, or maybe even if you did know it was going to go off. I can't, I can't speak for that. But I believe that you're, 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 you're trying to take something. If that statement was, that, I don't have that document in front of me. I don't remember ever saying that. So I'm being truthful. If you're perjuring, that's another story we'll take up later. But uh, the context that you're putting it in is certainly uh, not proper. Okay. The court, uh, my understanding of what the, of the counsel is quoting from is uh, the court uh, took judicial notice of the Supreme Court decision in this case, in, I'm not in this case, in the underlying criminal case. And in these cases on appeal, the court will usually say, and you can correct me, counsel, or, or confirm what I'm about to say if it's correct. They will say the court could reasonably find the following facts from the record. And they'll quote from some of the findings uh, uh, that they derive from the transcript and the filings before the court. And I assume that that's what you are uh, reading from or paraphrasing from. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. To clarify anything, there was one trial in this case, and that uh, trial was overturned by the Supreme Court and remained for new trial. And if I can further clarify, Your Honor, uh, with respect, uh, that trial was not allowed to happen by a, a, a failure of my counsel to get us there. And that's what resulted in a defective plea. I mean, that's your position. Is there anything? That's, not my position. Just, uh, that's 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 more fact than anything that uh, Attorney Summer was saying to you. And, and we're getting a little far afield here, but the, the court usually likes to have context for these things. Um, is there any pending collateral attack on your conviction at this time? Do you have a habeas, an appeal, a petition for a new trial, anything like that pending right now? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. There's um, also Mr. there's also new evidence uh, it, that has been obtained, um, but I'm not going to reveal it at, at this point unless you force me to. Okay, but Mr. Semeraro, um, I assume that you were either quoting or paraphrasing from did the did the uh, defendant testify on his own behalf, or was that from a witness a statement that he made against interest in uh, to a police officer? Where did that derive from? So. Yes, Your Honor. The two documents uh, I was paraphrasing from, the first, which I uh, just read, uh, the, the quote from briefly, was the Supreme Court's summation of the criminal proceeding. The second, which was the Exhibit C, um, was actual testimony by the defendant uh, during the, the criminal proceedings, um, which I was going to uh, read, which was the other document that I was paraphrasing from in my statement. And is that statement pertain to um, the perspective of the of Page, the decedent? That's um, correct. So then it would go it would go to to damages in that regard because it concerns emotional pain and suffering, as it were, and physical possible physical pain and suffering. That's correct, Your Honor. It, it concerns the suggestion that there was a moment of pain and suffering uh, before the decedent passed. All right. yeah, I Mr. That, 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 that's speculative. Again, he's, uh, this attorney is um, offering himself as a, a, a physician again. So, Mr. Chung, um, I'm going to allow it because uh, it, uh, A, is something, uh, another proceeding of which the court can take judicial notice, and B, it pertains to a prior statement of a party to the case, which is you. So I will allow it. Go ahead. Hey, um, this is from 
exhibit C of that document, which is taken from the testimony of, again, written as Chihan Eric Chung, March 27th, 2014. Uh, this was page 53 of that testimony, uh, beginning on line 26 at the bottom. This was an answer by the defendant. I made it very clear to you that our eyes met once the gun discharged. At that point in time, I did not know that she had been struck by the bullet, and I only realized it when she fell to the floor. It is... Um, my uh, legal argument based on these two documents that I have uh, presented that uh, the defendant suggested that there was at least a moment of recognition uh, and clarity between the statement um, of surprise or eyes meeting um, before she fell. I object. This is the attorney supposition, correct? Um, it's your the court. The court can make whatever inferences it wishes from that document, which is uh, in evidence uh, and rec represents a quotation of your testimony from a prior proceeding. So, um, okay. the objection is overruled. But thank you, Mr. Semeraro. Anything further? Thank you, Your Honor. O only that, um, as you know. This represents the, the final category of damages, and I would just ask that um, you take into consideration what that last moment might have been like. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honor, for your time. Breathe through this next part, people. Don't throw something at your TV. Just, just breathe through it. Thank and, you. Uh, Anything further? I, I ask the court to consider. Um, which is no one has asked me, and I guess nobody cares, but um, how do you think it was for me? He's, that's why he ran. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't point the gun at anybody, and I did not even know it was loaded. So, Without getting into everything, again, that's I, I believe it at that. You could both go home or sit right there for for five seconds, please, and and think about what it was like for me. How dare you? Yeah. Sorry. All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, listen. Um, I appreciate uh, everyone's participation in uh, today's hearing. Uh, the court will be um, taking the matter under advisement in the normal course of business. I know this is uh, a difficult situation and brings back events that occurred many years ago and affect people uh, to this day. So uh, I thank you for your time uh, and uh, for your participation, as I said, and uh, this concludes the hearing. Thank you very thank much. You. Thank you, Your Honor. Court is adjourned. How dare you, they said. How dare you. So, I don't have an ending for this. And something really weird um, happened to this case while I was looking through it, okay? So, I look at dockets before... Um, the day starts so I can see if there's any you know interesting cases so I look at the docket and the way I do that is I go you know to the docket number of cases that are coming up today and I look up each one of them individually okay so this one right here 6009190 it's the one we were on now before I go into it to show you what's weird I do want to show you this he is, his name is um, Chihan. His name is also Eric and Mark. There's no marks here, so that's fine. Um, 
right here is I think. Anyway, it doesn't matter. He's suing. I don't know. He's a party in some tax services case. Three different cases here. Um, one attorney, one attorney, and the police department of Norwich, Connecticut. Here he is suing another attorney. A comp- oh, it's the same one. A different... Um, a different case against the same attorney. This is not him. This is Karen. I don't know who she is. Um, now he's suing Susan Stanick. I don't know why. I could get into it, but I'm not going to. Um, this is the one we were on where he is getting sued for damages. Here he's suing Diana Chung, which, oh, Dana, Dana. And it has the same last name, so I don't know who it is. It could be, I don't know, it could be a marriage or um, a divorce or I don't know. I'm not, I didn't get into it. Here are four different cases with four different case numbers against the Commissioner of Corrections, the jail he's in. Um, that's it. That's it. She, this Dana check that he's suing, is also getting sued by two different people. Um, and none of them are the ones that he's suing. So it's definitely a messed up case. But it gets weirder, okay? So like I said, for me to record um, one of these cases, I go into the docket early, early on in the morning, you know, as soon as my stream is over, so like 6 a.m., 7 a.m., before court opens. And I look at, I go into the docket, okay? And one of the first things I do is I scroll down to the bottom and make sure that the event description says hearing, not um, status conference or anything like that. We don't care about status conferences. So I make sure it says hearing. And I make sure the time is right and the date is right. Okay. And I do that with this. I make sure that the date of the hearing is the day that I record it. And then I make sure that the time is right. All right. So I would have made sure that this date was uh, July. Because I just recorded this just, just a little bit ago. And the time was when I recorded it. But if you look, the last entry in this case right now is a is they motioned for continuance to, to July when I recorded it and the order granting the motion to continuance. The hearing that I have that we just watched is on here at all. And neither is his answer. Neither is his answer of, of you know, what happen. This is interesting though, right here. Um, appellate court decision appeal dismissed. I thought he won his appellate court and that's why he was in there. But this says that the appeal is dismissed for lack of final judgment. They were just talking about a final summer, summary judgment in the case. So Everything about this case is just, I don't know, something's, something's fishy going on. I don't know what it is, but anyway, um, it sounds to me like they're going to win. However, he was exactly right. What are they going to win? He's been in jail for 16 years. He has nothing. Maybe he has a house or something that he still owns. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what they expect to get from this. He still has 10 more years with jail to get to do. So that's what I had. I just thought it was interesting. So I got it. If I, I'm going to keep looking at this case. Trust me on that one. And when I come up with an update, I will post it as a video. Thanks, guys, for coming out. I really, really, really appreciate it. I hope you have a great night. Bye.